That's the semi-diurnal tide. You just have to imagine the, this football rotating inside this fixed rugby ball. Except, obviously, it's a bit more complicated than that, uh, because the moon doesn't just stay where it is, does it? Um, so what is the actual tidal period? The Earth rotates within the bulge, producing two tides per day. So here we have that sort of plan view of that. So here's the North Pole. The Earth's rotating like this in these four positions. One, two, three, four. So high tide, low tide, high tide, low tide. Okay. This is the exaggerated tidal bulge. But by the time it gets back here again, well, the moon's gone. It's not there anymore. I mean, you've noticed, I mean, I'm sure you must have noticed that um, the moon doesn't rise at the same time every night, right? Full moon, the moon rises about the same time as the sun sets, yeah? Because it's a full moon, that's, that's kind of obvious, right? The next day, it doesn't rise at the same time, it rises about an hour later, right? So you think, oh, I'm going to watch the moon rise again, and then you're hanging around for an hour, thinking, oh, what's it doing, where is it? And, and then it finally comes up, right? I mean, you should experience that. It's because the moon is orbiting the Earth, right? So, so the Earth goes round, so the Earth starts here, X, it goes round, that's one day, okay? Well, that's one sidereal day. And then you've got to, the moon's buggered off over here, so you've got to carry on a bit, another uh, 50 minutes. Well, uh, a bit more than that, actually. Um, because, so the, the actual period is 24 hours and, and 50 minutes, right? So, so this sidereal day here is actually uh, 23 hours and 56 minutes, because at the same time the Earth is going around the sun. The solar day is 24 hours. So anyway, this tidal period here is 24 hours and 50 minutes. So half of that is 12 hours and 25 minutes. That's the period of the lunar semi-diurnal tide, 12 hours and 25 minutes. But actually, it's not that simple either, because up to now, we've assumed that everything's in equilibrium, right? So the moon, wherever the moon is, that tidal bulge is pointing at the moon. All the forces are balanced all the time, right? Now, that is a fundamental assumption of tidal theory. Well, is it true? Does it work? Is it actually possible for this bulge to go around the Earth, for the Earth to rotate under this bulge would imply that this bulge is traveling around the Earth, right? Is it possible for a tidal wave to travel around the Earth at that speed? Um, how fast can a wave go at the equator, for example? How fast can a wave go, and how fast does it need to go? We can work it out. Let's, let's do it on the blackboard, right? So here's the Earth, and it's going around. How fast is it going at the equator? That's, that's the first question. Um, so here's the North Pole, right? So what's the, well, it's speed is, is distance divided by time, so it's 2 pi times the radius of the Earth divided by 24 times 3,600, okay? Um, uh, where A equals 6.4 times 10 to the 6 uh, meters, right? 6,400 kilometers. Someone be, somebody work that out for me? What's this speed? 2 pi times that divided by that. That'll be in meters per second. So we're thinking about a wave, a tidal wave, right, which has to travel at that speed. Right, it has to basically go the other way, doesn't it? Yeah. Relative to the Earth, relative to the rotating Earth. Come here. 465. Is that what you said? Yeah, sorry, I didn't hear you. 465. Meters per second. Is that possible? Can a wave go that fast? How fast does a wave go? It's a shallow water wave because it's very large scale. The ocean is five kilometers deep. So we've got the, the phase speed is equal to root, root GH, okay, which is equal to the square root of 9.81 times, what's the depth of the ocean? Five kilometers, okay, so 5,000. Somebody do that for me. Yeah? 221, 221 meters per second. All right, so compared to 465 meters per second, it's not going to keep up, is it, at the equator? So um, we're talking about the Earth rotating inside this bulge, and this bulge is pointing to the moon. 
this bulge can't keep up with the moon. So it's actually a bit more complicated than just saying it's an equilibrium tide. But the forcing frequency doesn't change. The forcing frequency is still 12 hours and 25 minutes. Right? So um, it, it won't keep up, but a day later, it'll still be attracted to the same position. It'll just do some non-equilibrium thing, which will have a period of 12 hours and 25 minutes. Is it that simple, though? That's the question. And no, actually, it's a little bit more complicated than that because the moon is not in the equatorial plane, right? Neither is the sun, right? The, 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 the angle between the moon and the equatorial plane is 28 and a half degrees. So it's quite a, quite a big angle. Compared to the sun, I mean, the sun is 23 and a half degrees, so, which means that the, the plane of the moon, moon's orbit is five degrees off from the plane of the Earth's orbit around the sun. Anyway, so 28 and a half degrees tilted compared to the equator, which means that this bulge here is not lined up perpendicular to the axis of the rotation of the Earth, right? So if you imagine now um, that the bulge is pointing at the moon at this 28 and a half degree angle, what would that high tide look like? Well, here's a high tide here. And then the other high tide on the other side, if you look at this latitude, well, it's not so high, is it? Because this is directly pointing with the bulge, but the bulge, the other end of the bulge, is down in the opposite hemisphere. So at the same latitude, the same position on the Earth, you have one big high tide and one small high tide. And then in between the two, the low tides are still the lowest you can get like this. An extreme example of that would be at a slightly higher latitude. The big high tide would be no bigger than the low tide. And so what you'd end up with is just one tide per day. So you can have combinations of signals from a diurnal tide and a semi-diurnal tide. That's the way uh, it, it's usually described. Just because of this tilt in the plane of the moon's orbit compared to the equator. There are other reasons why you have different signals, semi-diurnal and diurnal, which we'll get onto later, which if you want to, in a more realistic context. But there's a simple example of how even with a spherical Earth completely covered in ocean, you will still have combination of a diurnal tide and a semi-diurnal tide um, if the orbit of the moon is slightly off. Let's add another complication. The orbit of the moon is not circular, right? You have this elliptical orbit, right? Which means that sometimes the moon is closer and sometimes it's further away. Now, as we said at the beginning, right, the closer you are, the stronger the tides, yeah? Which means the amplitude of the tide varies throughout the month. Because when the moon is closer, you have a stronger tide. And when it's further away, you have a weaker tide. If you happen to have a full moon when the moon is close, you call that a supermoon, right? And people talk about that. You get on the news, like, oh, my God, there's going to be a supermoon, as if it was really rare. You have at least one every year, right? Because when the uh, moon is opposite the sun, that's a full moon. And this is, the ellipse is going to arrange itself like that at least once a year, right? Except this ellipse is not actually fixed in space. It has an 18.6 year precession period as well. So there's another time scale, uh, a very long time scale of variation of the tides, 18.6 years. Right? And we see more and more time scales coming into this now. Look, there's a 13% difference in the distance to the moon. That's going to change the period of the tides as well. So here we have to use uh, Kepler's law of equal areas. If you have, um, here's the Earth, right, and you have an elliptical orbit, right, and so the moon, here's the moon going around the Earth, it will sweep out equal areas in equal times. Right? So it's going faster when it's closer so that it can sweep out the same area slower when it's further away. Right? So that will change the tidal period. It won't always be 12 hours, 25 minutes. Sometimes it'll be a bit more. Sometimes it will be a bit less. So what's it going to be here? Is it going to be more than 12 hours, 25 minutes or less? Who says more? Hands up for more. All right, who says less? You're all wrong. It's going to be more. <laughs> so it takes longer. The moon moves further all right, in a day, for example. All right? which means that the Earth takes longer to catch up with it again. So the tidal period will be slower, 
right? And here, the moon's going slowly, so it'll be much closer to 12 hours because the Earth catches up with it sooner. I'm going to say stronger tides and longer period. And then we have weaker tides and shorter period. Yeah. Right? 